coach, the box score overall is totally turned around from the first two days. But looking at, at BAM, 13 shots, five assists, seemed to, to really be active. What, what did you like about him tonight? I thought that uh, both he and Draymond uh, facilitated a lot of action. They were very active, uh, got everybody involved. And uh, that's something that's really important for us. You know, those are the kind of uh, talents that they have and fits best, you know, with our shooters. So uh, providing that sort of uh, situation where our shooters can get open shots. Uh, and we did it without turning it over, which makes it wonderful. Uh, that's important for us. Aki Koyamaki from Kyoto News. Uh, I have a question to um, Bradley. Um, since the exhibition game started, what do you think is the most difficult things to adjust to? Uh, first person I learned to serve Jesus Christ. Um, uh, our biggest thing is we have to realize it's not the NBA, and Coach Pop keep reemphasizes that every single day. Um, it's way more physical. Um, guys are smarter. These guys have been playing together for five, ten plus years. So they have this experience in the chemistry, and we're trying to develop that in a short period of time. So, uh, you know, sense of urgency is kind of, you know, what we're kind of preaching. But at the same time, every single day we have to get better. And that's how we're taking it. You know, we're taking it a day at a time. Today we got better. Uh, still a lot more we can improve on, but we're moving in the right direction. Rob Schaefer, NBC Sports Chicago. Uh, I had one for each of you guys, if that was okay. Sure. Uh, Pop, Tatum, the late scratch. Zach gets elevated to the starting lineup. What went into that decision? What did you just say? Tatum. With Tatum being a late oh, scratch and, and Zach elevating to the starting lineup, what went into that decision? Uh, and how would you assess how he fared in that kind of new role? Well, he somebody's got to take Tatum's place. Uh, that that leaves eight players. So you choose one, you know, and it's simple as that. Was there anything particular about Zach's skill set, though, that you thought would fit better with oh, those? No, we're just figuring out combinations and that sort of thing. Cool. And yeah. then Brad, I, I know you've seen Zach do a lot of crazy stuff in the time that you've <laughs> known him, um, but that poster that he had early in the fourth quarter, what was yours and the team's uh, reaction to that? Uh, and where does it rank kind of in the things that you've, you've seen him be able to do physically? Uh, I mean, we've seen him do some crazier stuff than that, but obviously we know his athletic ability. Um, you know, it doesn't surprise us, but it gave, it definitely gave us a, a lift of energy and a boost for sure. But uh, Zach's talented. We know what he's capable of doing. Um, we want him to stay aggressive and, um, you know, continue to play unselfishly as he's been. Hey, Coach. Zora Stevenson with NBC Sports. I know after the game against Australia, you mentioned conditioning. How did the stamina look to you today? I thought we sustained it pretty well in our uh, game against Australia. We uh, competed well and uh, rebounded, played D, ran the floor, had good pace for a half. And then it dissipated, you know, through the second half. Uh, and tonight, I thought we maintained that pretty much throughout the game. Uh, so hopefully, that's a sign that we are getting a little better condition. And we also have to get rhythm. You know, some of the players, you know, they haven't played in a while, uh, let alone practicing together. They haven't shot the ball. They haven't been doing a whole lot. So uh, these moments uh, to play these games are huge for us. So. It was, it was better, bit by bit every day, I hope. And Bradley, one for you. The, the offense looked a bit more fluid, but I know making shots helps with that. How did, how did the offense feel to you today? Uh, like you said, it's fluid. I mean, but that just comes from us getting stops for one, uh, getting out in transition, which, which is something we love to do. We want to use our athletic abilities and talents and, uh, you know, draw and kick for each other. And, you know, when we do that, we move the ball two or three sides, you know, across the floor. It's able to give us easier shots, open shots, driving lanes. And uh, it's just making the game simpler. We realize everybody's talented, but we all got to sacrifice for the benefit of the team, and everybody's doing it. Brian Winhurst from ESPN. Bradley, this schedule is uh, pretty unprecedented, where you go long after last year, and then I don't know when you decided you were going to play, but you obviously had to rest, and then you had to build back up for what is – really high stakes basketball. Mm -hmm. How did you even approach putting this together? And do you think that was an issue for a lot of guys coming into this? Uh, I think it's tough. It was an easy decision for me. Um, I've always wanted to be a part of the Olympic team and be on the stage and have an opportunity to represent my country. Uh, but you know, I can't speak for everybody else and their thought process. It, it definitely 
you have to think about, you know, the long season we had. And then, you know, when we're done, we have about a month and a half, you know, until we start back up again in October. So uh, you, there's some things you vary, you vary into that, but ultimately, you know, this is, this is fun. Like this is something you want to be a part of. And you realize not every player has the, this opportunity or blessing to play on this team. So for me, it was a no brainer. Let me just follow that up with you, Pop. How do you balance how hard, you know, you're, you're talking about stamina, which is clear. How do you balance how hard to work them considering, I know you mentioned this a little bit yesterday, but how do you, how do you figure out your schedule? Yeah, that, that's something that uh, we coaches think about all the time. Uh, the last thing we want to do is overwork people to the point where we get injuries. Uh, but the first uh, priority is we, we have to get back in shape. Uh, and I was thrilled that this was a back to back, you know, for that reason, so that we come out and do it again. And it was a quick back to back having a three o'clock game. So uh, we're going to continue to work hard like uh, like we need to, uh, but it'll be efficient. It'll be uh, very uh, organized in the sense that uh, in this short time, we can't invent the wheel. We have to keep things simple. Uh, you know, I always go back to Stockton and Malone. You know, Jerry ran the same play for 20 years. Uh, they just ran it really well. And that's what we want to do. We want to play defense a certain way, offense very simply, but still taking advantage of uh, everybody's abilities. But uh, without the conditioning, we can't get this done. So we just have to go for it and not worry about consequences. Uh, so we'll, we'll manage that. And, and if I don't manage it well, and the assistants don't manage it well, I got a few guys on the team that'll let me know. Brian Hurlbert, Redline Editorial. For both of you, same question. What's the biggest thing that you've learned about your team and teammates over the last three games? Uh, for me, I think what I love is just how everybody's coming together in, in camaraderie. Like, it's very rare you see so many talented guys in one room who are unselfish at times. Coach tells us we're too unselfish at times. And so uh, I think that's amazing to see. You know, I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, you know, there's no egos involved. You know, we just go out there and compete at a high level. You know, that's something I like to see personally. Uh, I don't think I've been surprised by anything. You know, when we pick these guys, we pick them for a reason. Uh, you know, their abilities, but also their uh, the, how much of an affinity we thought they might uh, display for each other. Uh, what kind of chemistry could we build? What kind of character do we think we have? Uh, are they guys that are willing to sacrifice for their teammates? Uh, have these guys who know they're very good players, but do they still have the ability to get over themselves and respect the fact that the guy on their right and left are just as talented and that we have to do it together? So uh, there's no way I could be surprised by the fact that, you know, we had so many assists today and they're trying to do their best uh, to come together as a group. So uh, I, I just really can't, you know, make up uh, a surprise, to be honest with you. Uh, Coach, uh, Brian was talking earlier about the unprecedented nature of the schedule and everything going on. And part of that is that you have a finals going on while you guys are trying to get ready for this. So I'm wondering if you're watching the finals differently because you have three players for your team that are involved. And then now that you've been through this for a week, um, <clears throat> what your concern level is about being able to work them into everything that you're working on now. Uh, I have watched the games. Um, I have to admit that uh, I I watched three guys more than I watched the teams. Uh, it, I just can't help myself. I keep watching them. I keep hoping that they stay healthy. And then we all think about, you know, what would be the best way to include them and blend them into the group. And, you know, there's no... Uh, formula for that. Uh, I'm not sure that's ever happened uh, before. So part of it depends on how long the series goes. Uh, and once they get here, uh, 
we'll have a plan in place, but I think it's going to be a little bit by the seat of the pants because there's no uh, formula to go by. You know, it depends how the team is doing and the condition of the players here, um, what we think we need. And, you know, our first game is France. So uh, we'll look in terms of what uh, fits might work best, but uh, it's not going to be like they're going to come and sit for a week and get ready. They're going to have to come in and play. Thank you. Uh, Pop, whether it was with the World Cup group or with this group, you've mentioned, you know, the experience factor that so many international teams have, and probably nobody epitomizes that more than Scola. I, I guess what sort of what sort of appreciation do you have seeing a, a 41 year old guy still able to, to do what he's able to do out there for them? Uh, you know, Luis is a, a wonderful human being. Obviously, he loves basketball. He's been playing it for so long, you know, and it's a, 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 a group of guys, you know, for the last 10 or 15 years, 20 years, whatever it is, they're, they're very close. Uh, they love the game. Uh, they've been a great example of international basketball. And uh, Luis is a, the epitome of that. Uh, and I can only continue to be amazed at his love of the game, his love of his teammates, and how much he wants to lead and be there. So uh, he and, and their program are special. Thank you. Uh, Chase Hughes, NBC Sports question for Brad. Uh, what do you think was the key to the success you guys had defending the three-point line tonight? And has there been any adjustment in that regard in terms of the, the international rules and what you can get away with in terms of contact and that sort of thing? Uh, obviously, we can be a little bit more physical, but I mean, they're still they're still cognizant of what's a foul, what's not a foul. Uh, but we were just more aggressive in our pickup points on the three point line. Uh, we made sure both of our feet were above, and then all of our switches they were up and aggressive. You know, versus our last couple games where we were very lazy, um, pointing out instead of coming together in contact and switching the right way. So we were a lot better today. Granted, we still had some some slip ups and still had some miscommunications. Um, but every day is a day to get better. So um, we look at film tomorrow and hopefully get better again. Uh, 